Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. In this video, I'm going to talk about EIP 2535. You may know it as the Ethereum Diamond Standard or the Multifacet Proxy Standard. I'm going to talk about what it is and how it works. Before we get into that, here on What the Funk, we talk about all things blockchain development and Web3. If that's something that you're into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure to click the bell notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. So what is EIP 2535? In short, it's a way to organize large and very complex Solidity smart contracts. It's organized in kind of a proxy pattern with one single contract proxying calls to several different contracts behind it. So basically you have a smart contract living at one single address that can make calls to various different contracts at different addresses. So in practice, in a large smart contract application, you would organize similar logic into various contracts. And these contracts can be deployed separate from each other and don't even have to talk to each other. Each of these smaller contracts behind the main proxy contract are called facets. They're called facets because in a diamond, each edge of a diamond or side of a diamond is called the diamond's facet. Diamond contracts are also upgradable. What makes diamond contracts different from other proxy patterns is that the upgrades are very granular. Instead of adding and removing a single implementation contract, you can add, remove, and upgrade individual functions from different contracts as you see fit. So how does a diamond work? First, every diamond has a main diamond contract. This contract doesn't have a lot of functionality. Ideally, a diamond contract should just have a fallback function and a way to map and look up functions from other contracts. If you're not familiar, Solidity fallback functions are the functions that are called when you're calling a contract with a function name that doesn't actually exist on the contract. The diamond takes advantage of this feature in Solidity. Say for example, you call function A on your diamond. The diamond contract itself does not have a function A. Instead, it's going to take the signature of the function that you just called, look it up in a mapping, and figure out which contract actually has function A. The contract will then use delegate call, which essentially loads the code from another contract and uses it in the context of the diamond contract. So using delegate call, the diamond will forward all of your arguments and parameters to the function A in the contract that it found in its mapping, and then update state or return the result as needed. Diamonds are upgraded by using a special method called diamond cut. Depending on the arguments you pass to this method, you can add, remove, or even replace functions within your diamond. This method will update the internal mapping of the diamond contract so it knows where to look for specific functions in specific contracts. In practice, the diamond cut method actually lives in a separate contract from the main diamond contract. This is important because there's one downside to using a diamond that I'll speak about in a little bit. So what are the benefits of using a diamond? It makes it very easy to code and organize large and complex smart contract projects. It helps you to avoid size limits when coding your smart contracts. For example, Ethereum has a 24 kilobyte size limit for smart contracts. If your contract is large and complex, you may be prevented from even deploying this contract. A diamond lets you break this contract up into smaller contracts so you can deploy the entire application. Another benefit to using a diamond is it allows you to build your application fast. In the Web3 world, things are changing at a very fast pace. In order to succeed, you need to be able to build fast, break things, and then iterate on those ideas quickly. A diamond allows you to do this by upgrading only parts of your contract without having to change the address of the overall contract. Now, what are some of the cons of using a diamond? Because a diamond is upgradable, requires the user to inherently trust you, the smart contract developer. This is fine in the beginning if you have the trust of your community and you have a good reputation, but there's always the idea lingering that you could rug pull with some malicious code at any time. Remember when I spoke about the upgradability method being in a separate contract to the diamond? The fact that it's in a separate contract means that you can actually use this method for upgrading, removing, and adding functions in your contract to remove the upgradability itself. In essence, when you're ready, you can make your diamond contract immutable, so no longer upgradable. This is a great way to make your contract trustless after a round of iterating and fixing bugs and getting your smart contract into a state 
that is ready and secure for users to use long term. And that's basically it. I've actually used diamonds in several of my projects and enjoy it. I hope this video inspires you to explore the Ethereum Diamond Standard or EIP 2535. What do you think? Is it a good standard? Have you tried this standard? Are you looking forward to trying this standard on a project in the future? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like me to do another video more in depth on the Diamond Standard or to do a tutorial on building a diamond from scratch, let me know down below as well. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Also, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.